Ford's 1958 Edsel Pacer coming up next on What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Well, here we go, the 1958 Ford Edsel Pacer. Voted one of the worst cars in history. Which is kind of sad, because the reason why it was the worst car is because Ford released it on the market just a little too fast. And it was also voted one of the ugliest cars because of this horseshoe radiator. I won't get into some of the things they said about it, but uh, anyway, it's interesting because a lot of new cars are using this type of radiator. Uh, I noticed some of the Japanese ones are doing it. But... Let's not talk about the radiator. Let's talk about what's in the box as we go down to our bench and open up and see the 1958 Edsel Pacer. Now let's open up the lid on our 1958 Edsel Pacer by AMT Ertl. And here again I've got the instructions with where I bought the model and when and what I was thinking at the time. No, maybe not that deep, but bought at Canadian Superstore, which was a grocery store, still is, on February 10th, 2002 for $6.97. Another price you will never ever see again in model kits. Comes with a little flyer for the replica, which was a AMT Riddle magazine. And inside here are the license plates. It says FE 1958 Edsel and Iowa 6451. And the top license plate is from Michigan. Michigan and again and again. I'd like to see some Canadian license plates. But anyway. Okay, 58 Edsel Pacer. Gives you a nice description here on it. Oops. And this is one of those kits that was built by the AMT staff when they were trying or designers when they were trying to compete with Ravel and Monogram back in the in the early 90s and so they have a very excellent kit with multi pieces in it like the carburetors and the detail under the valve covers and all sorts of things and there's our wheels going together multi piece with a separate white wall insert and here is the paint charts from that era telling you which colors went to which cars and then our interior panels and the Edsel was kind of revolutionary as it had a three-quarter split bench seat. So this side was narrower than that side. And you could flip it down to put gear in your car, much like today. But keep in mind, this is 1958. It was also to help ease people into the back seats. So there you have your separate frame and two-piece exhaust. Uh, separate door panels on your interior. Posable wheels for the front and then the nice glass with a separate back rear body panel big firewall going in there the Edsel was criticized back in the day for being ugly for having this horseshoe style radiator I won't get into what some people called it but <laughs> anyway um, yes so but it's interesting, I've seen this horseshoe radiator now coming uh, on a lot of Japanese van, uh, minivans and other things of our era. So I guess somebody somewhere likes the design. But anyway, they also give you separate chrome backing taillight um, bezels and clear red taillights. It's quite a cool kit. It goes together really well. I've attempted to build one of these in the past, but haven't quite finished it yet. I was going for some really garish colors. <laughs> um, it had to be custom sprayed through an airbrush. It didn't work out. But anyway, here's the clear parts. You can see they've got the separate no-draft windows in there. Hmm, should open up these bags. Ah, there is the Edsel body. I hate how they have the cautions on there, but there it is. And you can see nice crisp pacer emblem right there along with the chrome that didn't quite connect but it's interesting if you look at this um, Ford with the Edsel is trying to compete with Buick that was their their idea 
and of course it kind of failed because the car was not known as being reliable. But if you look at a 58 Pontiac, you'll see this same kind of side spear, the chrome connects. But the Pontiac has this as a big rocket in the side, which should have actually been on Oldsmobile, but I don't know, it, it was weird. But there is speculation that the guy that designed the Pontiac actually was fired from GM and moved over to Ford Division and was just in time for the Edsel. So some of his styling influences were used on the Edsel. I don't know how accurate that is, but you can always look it up. So I'm going to open up the bag on this kit. Just because there's, it hasn't been done and there seems to be quite a lot of parts in here that we should look at. So here we go. Now I'll just move these here. And there is our hood and our front suspension pieces and the separate springs. You even get little um, hood latches here, which is quite a nice touch. There is our frame. You can see quite a lot of crisp detail going on in here. And after the frame comes our underpan with the little gas gas tank in there and spare tire well. There's also some texture back here, much like the floorboard texture. So if you wanted to open your trunk you could and have that detail there. That's sort of above and beyond just building this out of the box. So and you can see our nice upholstery pattern. Quite a lot of great detail in this even if the car was voted the most ugliest car ever designed by Ford. <laughs> I don't know, there's something quaint about it. Oops, there is the rear panel that goes into the back under the trunk. I think it might have been hard for AMT to to get the that molded properly like that as a one piece. There you can see the uh, upholstery for the front seat. It's interesting how they never carried this all the way across. Sorry, there you go. I can never understand that, but maybe that was part of the this seat folding down thing. I don't know. Uh, who can explain what the thinking was back then, but still, quite a nice kit. And of course there's our differential and our exhaust. And you can see it's got the ribs with the Ford emblem in it. That's quite a nice piece, considering that most of the mufflers are completely left blank on most model kits. And you see the separate instrument panel. So you can paint it, even do it as a two-tone and then glue it in separately. And they also had this little uh, little thing in there. I believe that was the speedometer. And kind of rolled this way instead of a needle going up and down. Kind of another innovative idea. And then you've got your engine block and your radiators. And of course your dashboard. And look at the detail on the air cleaner. It's also very, very nice and very crisp. And turning this over, you can see the rocker arms on your your uh, valves. The engine head. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the chrome's all facing the wrong way, but it's got nice detail. Trust me. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, and we're coming to the last few pieces here. There's our red tail lights, and here are the white wall inserts for our tires. They give you one extra white wall insert, even though the tire is not there. And these tires were brand new at the time. They are BF Goodrich. Uh, Silver Town or something. It's hard to read it. <laughs> but yeah. So that concludes our review of AMT Ertl's 1958 Edsel Pacer. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Monster Hobby's What's in the Box, where we got to see the 1958 Edsel Pacer. Ford's idea of a competitor to Buick, believe it or not. 
Now, if you would like to see what other amazing model kits I have available for sale, check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca and don't forget to subscribe to us here so you can check out our channels and ring that little bell so you get your notifications and check out these three other amazing unboxing videos and until next time keep dreaming of the space age